Right, I just wanted to do um, a little recap on the uh, Solar MPPT test rig and I've laid things out in a slightly different order on the board now to make it a bit easier to understand what's going on. So this section here is just a computer and all it's doing is measuring voltage on this sensor and current on this sensor up here, multiplying them together to give watts and then there's a watts peak figure which just records the maximum value that this ever yields. Let's just have a slightly closer look at that. So it's showing the volts, showing the amps, showing the watts, showing the peak watts and there's a bar graph there uh, to get an analogue view of what's going on. Now at this point here the computer stops. It's not connected in any way with this section here which is an oscillator. Just a simple 555 based oscillator um, where I can vary the frequency on this pot, the pulse width on this pot, um, and I can take the pulse width all the way up to 100%, so now it's not pulsing, the MOSFET is turned on 100%, and the solar panel is connected directly to the battery, and you can see that from the 12.7 volts that we're getting there on the solar panel, and on the battery here, 12.56 volts there. Solar panel incident is there in the sun. I'm sitting in the shade. Um, right, the next section here, the last section, is the buck converter. These are the high power components. It's a sort of classic T shape of a buck converter. Here we've got the MOSFET on the left arm. Uh, on the right arm is the inductor, and the stem here is the Schottky diode. I've added a capacitor here on the solar panel side just to um, sort of stabilize things a bit. I'm thinking I might have to add a capacitor here across the battery terminals because um, I've noticed there's ringing on the uh, on the inductor there and uh, also because I'm now switching let's turn it back to um, switching voltage on the solar panel coming up try and maximize the power that's too much that's too little so it's about there um, I'm now getting a fairly jittery voltage reading didn't jitter before at all, now it is, probably because of switching noise being caused here in the buck converter section. So what I might do is put a capacitor across the solar panel here where the measurement device is, this voltage measurement here. I'm also getting um, quite a noisy measurement on the current. That's always been the case, this sensor does seem to be noisy. Incidentally, this screwdriver is magnetic. If I bring it near the sensor, the current value disappears off the screen. That's because it's Hall effect. Anyway, that's irrelevant, really. Um, I think the way to solve the noisy readings on the current sensor is to do some average readings. So take four or eight readings, maybe. Well, it doesn't have to be four or eight, does it? It can be any number. And then uh, divide uh, to get an average value, and it should smooth the readings out. And that, that would hopefully get rid of some of this jitter. It's quite substantial jitter there, and it does make it difficult, when I'm turning the pot here, to find the maximum. That's with the uh, MOSFET 100% on, that's with a bit of switching so we're getting a little bit of uh, gain uh, and then if I turn it too far of course it just collapses away. The, vo the solar panel voltage goes way up but the watts drops off. Bring the solar panel voltage back down to maximize the watts, bring the solar panel all voltage all the way down to the same as the battery and we don't get maximum watts. So that's the current state of play with the uh, MPPT solar test rig. Now I've been having some thoughts about what's going on here with the buck converter and the oscillator. Um, it, it seems to me that the next phase is going to have to have a proper microcontroller controlled oscillator because this one just doesn't have enough flexibility. Um, now if that's, if that's the case, I'm going to have to reference the microcontroller probably to this main ground line here, the ground line that everything else is referenced to. Currently the oscillator has its ground up here um, and that's so that I can uh, drive the MOSFET nice and easily. High side MOSFETs are notoriously difficult to drive but um, I'm going to have to think about a way of doing that. I might use opto isolators. I'm certainly going to have to put a charge pump circuit on here to get a voltage higher than that of the battery. Um, and then later on I thought what I might do is use multiple buck converters. So sort of stack them up in rows and drive them in a multi-phase uh, way so that um, might go to three-phase, four-phase, even five-phase, six-phase buck converters 
<clears throat> and have multiple buck converters racked up um, as a way of sort of um, deciding how much current this thing's going to take. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that this toroid here, you can get these little toroids quite cheap, but if you want big toroids that take very large currents, they're extremely expensive. And I thought an idea would be to use multiple small buck converters with small toroids and small MOSFETs, and possibly even not need any heat sinking on the MOSFETs. That would be very nice, because heat sinks means heat, and heat means waste. Um, so go for a multi-phase buck. Anyway, these are all ideas for the future. I just thought I'd do a bit of an overview now. And um, those are my plans. How long it'll take to implement them all, I don't know. We'll have to see. And uh, just one final thing. While I was shooting that video, or at least when I was playing it back, I thought I could hear, could hear the 15 kilohertz uh, frequency of the oscillator. So I'm just going to see if that's actually the case. I'll bring the microphone right down near the inductor. Now I'm just going to tweak the oscillator frequency down and then back up and uh, see whether that's indeed what I was hearing.